These bad boys are like the superheroes of the sky, equipped to handle all sorts of missions from air-to-air -air combat to ground strikes. We've got a lineup of the top 10 best fighter jets in the world, so let's get into it. Starting off at number 10, we've got the Saab JAS-39 Gripen. This plane is made by a Swedish company called Saab AB, and it's super impressive. The Gripen is not your average fighter jet. It's a light, single-engine aircraft that can go really fast, even faster than the speed of sound. It's designed to do a lot of things, like fighting other planes, attacking targets on the ground, and doing reconnaissance missions. Back in the late 1970s, Sweden wanted to replace some of its old fighter jets. They needed something fast and agile that could take off and land on short runways. Saab came up with the Gripen design, and in 1988, they flew the first one. Since then, the Gripen has become upgraded and improved over the years. Now, there are different versions of the Gripen like the A, B, C, D, E, and F models. Back in the late 1970s, Sweden needed a new fighter jet. They wanted something smaller than their old jets, but just as powerful. They looked at different designs, including ones from other countries, but they decided to make their own with Saab. Saab worked hard on the design, and in 1982, they got the green light to start building prototypes. They even named the plane Gripen, which means Gryphon, after a mythical creature that's part eagle and part lion. It can zip through the skies at supersonic speeds without breaking a sweat, and it has some seriously cool avionics to help the pilot lock onto targets. Next up at number 9, we've got the mighty Mikoyan MG-31 Foxhound. It's super fast, just like its predecessor, and it's one of the fastest combat jets in the world. It first took to the skies in 1975 and was officially introduced in 1981. Now, the MG-31 is still flying high today, even after the end of the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union. The Russian Aerospace Forces and Kazakh Air Defense Forces still use it and they plan to keep it in service until at least 2030. When it comes to its design, the MIG-31 shares some features with the MIG-25, but it's got some upgrades too. It's got this really cool radar that can track multiple targets, even those flying low to the ground. Now, let's talk production. The MIG-31 started rolling off the production line in 1979, and over 500 of them have been built so far. They've been made in different batches, with some getting upgrades along the way. Speaking of upgrades, the MIG-31 has seen some improvements over the years. There's a version called the MIG-31BM, which has better avionics, new radar, and can even carry different types of missiles. The Russian military has been working on upgrading their MIG-31 fleet to the standard. Overall, the MIG-31 is a beast of an aircraft, and has been a key part of Russia's air defense strategy for decades. With its speed, firepower, and advanced technology, it's definitely a force to be reckoned with. Coming in at number 8, we've got the Eurofighter Typhoon. It's a really cool fighter jet that was designed by a bunch of countries in Europe, like the UK, Germany, Italy, and Spain. It's super fast, has two engines, and can do all sorts of cool things like flying really high and really fast. It's not just for one thing though, it can do lots of different jobs, like fighting other planes in the sky or attacking targets on the ground. The Eurofighter Tycoon project started way back in 1983 when these countries decided they wanted to make a new fighter jet together. They had already worked on another plane called the Panavia Tornado, so they thought, hey, let's team up again. But it wasn't easy. There were disagreements and France ended up leaving the group to make their own plane. After lots of hard work and some bumps along the way, they finally made the first Eurofighter prototype in 1994. They called it the Typhoon and it's been flying high ever since. It officially joined the air forces of different countries in 2003, and now it's used by countries like the UK, Germany, Italy, Spain, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and even Kuwait and Qatar. This plane is really special because it's not just good at fighting other planes, it's also great at attacking stuff on the ground. It can carry all sorts of cool weapons like missiles and bombs, plus it's super agile which means it can move around really really quickly in the sky. At number 7, we've got the Soko Su-35 Flanker E. This Russian fighter is super maneuverable and can take on multiple enemies at once. The Su-35 is like a super upgraded version of the Su-27 air defense fighter. Picture this, it's a single seat twin engine beast of a plane designed by the brilliant minds at the Sukhoi Design Bureau and built by the Sukhoi themselves. Now let's get to the nitty gritty details. The Su-35 originally started as the Su-27M back in the Soviet Union. It was born from the Su-27, but with some serious upgrades. Think canards, those small wings near the cockpit, and a fancy radar system that made it a multi-role fighter. The first test flight happened in June 1988, and it was a game changer. Now, let's talk about what makes this jet so special. 
The Su-35 isn't just your average fighter. It's built for serious performance. With its canards and redesigned wing edges, it can pull off crazy maneuvers without breaking a sweat. Plus, it's got this cool radar system called the NO-11 bars, which can track targets like nobody's business. And let's not forget those thrust vectoring engines. They give it some serious oomph in the sky. Overall, the Su-35 is a force to be reckoned with. It's sleek, powerful, and ready to dominate the skies. Now, let's talk about the Rafale, coming in at number 6. This French fighter is sleek, fast, and highly capable. It's got all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a top-tier fighter jet, including advanced avionics and a deadly arsenal of weapons. Back in the late 1970s, the French Air Force and Navy needed new planes to replace their old ones. Now, the Rafale isn't your average fighter jet. It's got some fancy features like direct voice input, a super high-tech radar system, and infrared sensors. Plus, it's mostly built by French companies like Dassault, Thales, and Safran. It was supposed to be ready by 1996, but there were delays because of budget cuts and changing priorities. There are three main versions of the Rafale, one for the Air Force, one for the Navy, and a two-seater version. The first one came into service in 2001, and since then it's been used by the French military in places like Afghanistan, Libya, and Syria. But here's where it gets really interesting. Other countries want in on the Rafale action too. Egypt, India, Qatar, and a bunch of others have all bought Rafales for their own air forces. It's a hot ticket item in the world of fighter jets. Moving on to number 5, we've got the Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornet. These bad boys are supersonic twin-engine carrier-capable multi-role fighters that pack a serious punch. They're used by the armed forces of the US, Australia, and Kuwait. Now, let's break it down. The FA-18E is a single-seat version, while the FA-18F is a tandem-seat version. They're like bigger and fancier versions of the FA-18C and D Hornets. These Super Hornets are armed to the teeth with a 20mm rotary cannon and can carry all sorts of missiles and other weapons. Plus, they can even double up as airborne tankers with some cool refueling systems. Now let's talk about how this awesome aircraft came to be. It all started with a prototype aircraft from Northrop back in the 1960s called the P-530. Fast forward to the 1980s, McDonnell Douglas had this cool concept called the Hornet 2000, which was basically a souped up version of the F-A-18 with a bigger wing and more fuel capacity. The idea gained traction, especially as the Cold War ended and military budgets tightened. The Navy needed something more modern to replace older aircraft like the A-6 Intruder and even the F-14 Tomcat. That's where the Super Hornet came in. It was seen as a more affordable and capable alternative to the other proposed designs. And you know what? It proved itself on the battlefield, becoming a vital part of naval aviation. Sure, there were some controversies along the way, but the Super Hornet has cemented its place in military history as a true powerhouse. At number 4, we've got the Chengdu J-20. This Chinese stealth fighter is a real game changer. With its advanced radar evading technology and powerful engines, it's a force to be reckoned with in the skies. The J-20 came from a program back in the 1990s, and it made its first flight in 2011. The first combat unit formed in 2018, making China the first in Asia to have a stealth aircraft. The development process involved lots of testing and upgrades to make it as powerful as possible. Over the years, the J-20 has gotten some serious upgrades. There's been talk of a twin-seat version for different missions like tactical bombing and electronic warfare. Plus, there have been engine upgrades with China replacing Russian engines with their own high-tech WS-10C engines for better performance and less dependency. Now, let's talk about the Su-57 coming in at number 3. Su-57 is a super cool twin-engine stealth fighter developed by Sukhoi. It's a part of the PACFA program, which started in 1999 as a way to create a more modern and affordable alternative to the MFI project. The Su-57 is a big deal because it's the first Russian military aircraft designed with stealth technology, which basically means it's really hard for the bad guys to spot it. Plus, it meant to be the start of a whole family of stealthy planes. Now, let's talk about what makes the Su-57 so special. It's what we call a fifth generation fighter, which means it's got all the bells and whistles for aerial combat, as well as ground and maritime strike missions. It's got stealth, which helps it sneak up on enemies, super maneuverability, so it can do crazy moves in the sky, super cruise, which means it can fly really fast without using afterburners, integrated avionics, which are all the fancy gadgets inside, and a big internal payload capacity, so it can carry lots of weapons. The Su-57 is basically like a cool new kid on the block, set to replace older Russian planes like the MiG-29 and Su-27. 
It's even being offered for sale to other countries. Coming in at number 2, we've got a Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. This bad boy is the most advanced fighter jet in the world. It's got stealth capabilities, state-of-the-art avionics, and can take on just about any mission you throw at it. Now, this aircraft comes in three different versions. The F-35A, which can take off and land conventionally. The F-35B, which can take off vertically and land vertically, kinda like a helicopter. And the F-35C, which is designed to take off and land on aircraft carriers. The F-35 has a really interesting backstory. It all started with a program called the Joint Strike Fighter, JSF, which combined a bunch of different aircraft programs from the 80s and 90s. The goal was to create a new, advanced fighter jet that could do it all. Lockheed Martin won the contract in 2001, beating out Boeing, and the rest is history. Now, the F-35 program is a big deal, with countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, and a bunch of others all chipping in to help fund it. But it hasn't been smooth sailing. There have been some challenges along the way, like delays and rising costs, but despite that, the F-35 is now flying high. And finally, at number one, we've got the Boeing F-22 Raptor. Well, the F-22 Raptor is a super advanced fighter jet developed for the United States Air Force or the USAF. It's like a superhero in the sky. It's got all kinds of cool features like being able to fly super fast, even faster than the speed of sound, and it's designed to be really hard for enemies to detect. That's because it's got stealth technology, which basically means it's really good at hiding from radar. Now, the F-22 Raptor wasn't just built for flying fast and staying hidden. It's also really good at taking out other planes in the sky, which is why it's called an air superiority fighter. But wait, there's more! It can also do stuff like attack ground targets, gather intelligence, and mess with enemy electronics. It's like the Swiss Army knife of fighter jets. Let's talk a bit about how this awesome plane came to be. Back in the 1980s, the US Air Force realized they needed a new plane to replace their old ones, like the F-15 and F-16. They wanted something that could handle all kinds of missions and keep up with the latest technology, so they started a program called the Advanced Tactical Fighter ATF program. Now, the F-22 Raptor was originally supposed to be a part of the big fleet of planes, but due to some issues like high costs and changes in the Air Force's needs, they ended up only making a few hundred of them. But even though there aren't as many as originally planned, the F-22 Raptor is still a crucial part of the US Air Force's arsenal. <laughs>